Mike Anderson, builder of the Free Hand Steering System. This is. Hi, my name is Ken Banks, and I'm the owner of Solomar Bristol Channel Cutter Hole Number One Fourteen. And, and I'm Joff Jenks, and I used to work at Sam and Morse Company building the boats. So we're here to go ahead and install the upper unit. Show you how we do that. Once this is on loosely, so you can slide it up the wire. You're going to go about 83 inches, it will vary when I get you in the ballpark, from the top of the swage. So we have all of our tools set up here. We got uh, needle nose pliers, uh, a drive, a slot screwdriver, and the, the appropriate screws, and uh, blue Loctite, not red. So we'll take the unit and turn it over. These are your two brackets. Take off the little screws, and this is out. And he's going to put the back stay through the hole so that it's always on the the swaging. Put both screws in. Make sure everything lines up. And take one screw out at a time. We're going to clamp the L bracket now to the wire. Make sure it's equidistant on both sides of the L brackets. Now we're going to take the whole unit and go to the back of the boat and attach it. sail on now. We're going to start at the bottom by putting it in the guides. Okay, and then now we'll put on the upper brace. Got it? Yep. length bolts. There we have the installation of the upper unit. We're going to put on the dive weight five pounds which is a standard dive weight so if you lose it it's easy to replace and you can use it for other things. It balances the weight of the sail. Uh, if you take the sail off in heavy winds you'll want to move this in farther. As it is now we're going to put it out Ok, 
okay that's this distance here you might want to mark it here so when it's swinging real easily mark it here take this off and put a nylon not lock nut on it and that's it after the basic install is complete you'd want to swing the unit and see if you feel any binding whatsoever if you do you might want to climb back up and adjust the dog bone to compensate for that. What we're going to do now is put the wheel line on. And the way I start it is I run it through each of these blocks and through the clutch. This clutch moves forward and back. And the reason you want it forward and back is you need to find the null point or the apex point. Also, you can move it back if you don't want to use a free hand as a wind vane and you want to use the auto helm, you can adjust the, tr the uh, clutch again and move it forward and back depending on what needs to be done. Mike, how do you determine the correct position for, of the clutch? The correct position, it wants to find the null point or the apex point. The apex point is found this way. You have a straight line coming off the leading edge of the rudder, an imaginary straight line, and let's just say this this is it right here. We have the wheel line that goes across. That apex is here. That means there's no positive or no negative movement. It's the balance point. All right. Let's continue on with the wheel line. We're going to go through each of these blocks. We're going to go up and around the wheel. Take another full turn around it. I'd like to adjust and make the tie-on right aft or opposite of the weight, the counterbalance weight. We're going to come through the pleats and put in a, a square knot. Now Mike, what is the tension of that line? The line wants to be loose, it does not want to be snug. If you go snug, then it's working against itself. If you go loose, it's only going to be taut on one side, the side that's actually doing the steering. The opposite side is just going to be floating, basically loose. This tension here is about right. Now, if we didn't want to use the vein itself when we're just motoring, what we would do is loosen this up so that the wheel line is not in the clutch. Move the clutch out of the way and let it just free float. At that point, if we're motoring and say the boat is out of adjustment and balance, you're going to snug up the lock nut or the the, the rudder lockups and put down the the nut that goes with this, and then you can adjust it as Ken said earlier, one or two turns or a quarter turn, depending on what you need. That adjust the boat so it's going straight. The reason that could happen is that you might be using too much water off of one side of the boat or depleting your diesel on another side of the boat or your stores. That'll make the boat wander off a little bit one direction or the other. You can take that out by using this simple device. Describe the function of the wheel line holders and their position. Yeah, the wheel line holder are these little arms that have a little turning block on the underside. What they do is they take the wheel line itself and redirect it to the apex point to where the clutch is and that's where you want to clamp it down. That's basically all the function it is and they're made in bronze so they can be adjusted if you need to. Sometimes they get stepped on, they get down too low, just bend them right back up into position. The other thing we want to talk about is the auto helm and the bracket that holds this Simrad TP10. Basically all it is is a, has a peg here and the bracket is in line with the apex point again at the same height. And all you're going to do is drop this in to the holder, turn it on, adjust this to the center point of the peg itself that's on the clutch. And that is again on the apex point. At that point you can uh, see your manual and figure out how to dial this down so it's not so sensitive. And then from that point, when you're not using the wind vane and you want a motor, you can go ahead and use this 
auto helm and it'll, it'll give you a direct course. So Mike, let's go sailing and try this thing.